The Game Awards has come and gone, and now we know about a ton of brand new games. Hi folks, it's Falcon. Here's the top 10 new game announcements of the Game Awards 2021. A quick disclaimer, Forspoken, Plague Tale Requiem, Elden Ring, Hellblade 2, Suicide Squad, Evil West, etc. These were games that were announced before the Game Awards, and what we're talking in this video today are brand new reveals, so keep that in mind as we're moving forward. Starting off with number 10, it's Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2, which is a mouthful of a title, but it's also been too long since the original. It was a game from 2011 that was really well received. I enjoyed it. It is a good kind of combination of hack and slash and shooting, and it was one of those games that just took its IP and did it justice. It was a great depiction of Warhammer 40k. It ended on a cliffhanger, though, and then another game just didn't come out. I don't know whether it wasn't financially successful enough. It seemed like it had a, a fairly big following to me at the time. I wasn't really paying attention to the numbers too closely, but it's great to know that a sequel is coming. Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 has been announced. We don't have a release date, but it will be landing on PS5, the Xbox series, and PC. And number nine is Sonic Frontiers, being billed by Sonic Team as a new kind of Sonic game. It is an open world game, and I've seen a lot of people compare it to Breath of the Wild in terms of look. I'm not sure I agree. It actually reminds me a lot of Sonic Adventure, except for obviously with significantly better graphics, lots more detail, etc., etc. And of course, it is an open world game. So we have dealt with hub worlds in Sonic, like particularly particularly with Sonic Adventure, but it's not really been something that's been dabbled in too much. And it, let's just say the games where they did it didn't really go that great. I'm looking at you, Sonic 2006. But we also live in a time where a lot of open world ideas have been worked on. And in terms of Sonic's 3D movement, momentum is understood much better. Sonic Colors just came out, and I have a feeling that's kind of a bit of a hint as to what type of 3D we're going to be experiencing and i think if they do it right this could be an extremely good sonic game now with sonic team if they do it right has always been a question that is up in the air sometimes they really nail it like with sonic generations and then they do things like sonic forces where it's clearly trying to capture sonic generations and make it more or possibly less i don't know i feel like the re-release of sonic colors is kind of a message like hey we understand which ones of these games are good and my fingers are crossed sonic frontiers is landing on pretty much every console the playstations the xboxes the switch and pc in 2022 at number eight is Ark Raiders, which from the trailer, I'm kind of getting PVE kind of horrid or wave style gameplay. It's obviously co-op and, and you have a pretty wide range of different types of enemies. Anyway, this is a free to play first person sci-fi shooter that looks pretty interesting. First off, it's the first game by a new studio called Embark Studios, which was founded by the former EA chief designer. And we see a lot of interesting things in here. Like you're fighting these sort of spider looking walker things. And then of course there's like it's kind of stealthy looking gameplay where you're trying to avoid these scout type drone things. And it looks like a lot of it takes place at night with these really good looking colored lights and kind of frenzied situations if you get detected. And it seems like it might escalate from that into large scale fighting that kind of looked equal parts gears and Horizon Zero Dawn to me, which is super interesting for a combination of gameplay in a co-op game. I, I like the sound of that. But again, we will have to find out more as we get closer to it. Arc Raiders is going to be hitting PS5, the Xbox series, and PC in 2022. And number seven is Star Trek Resurgence, a game that looks like it takes everything you know about, let's say, a Telltale Games release, adds maybe a little bit more polish to it, and even gives me somewhat of a mass effect in terms of, well, not necessarily action, but a feel of the sort of mass effect diplomacy options. It's the first game by Dramatic Labs, which was founded by some former Telltale Games folks, but it does look like they're attempting to add something new to the formula what exactly that pans out to mean i'm not 100 percent sure but there was a point where you were actually 
actually wielding what seemed like a weapon in the trailer. However, it is, of course, primarily a narrative game, and the trailer itself reminds you, hey, this was made by the creators of The Walking Dead and the Batman Telltale series and so on. It's interesting that we now have a Telltale that looks like it understands what Telltale was doing and is continuing it, and a studio made up of former Telltale people continuing on the path that they were originally on. Star Trek's probably a good IP for them to be doing that in, and we'll definitely see where this one goes when it comes out on the PlayStations, the Xboxes, and on PC in 2022. And number six is Rumbleverse, a game that's billing itself as a pro wrestling battle royale. I would actually go a little bit further and say it's kind of a 3D brawl type game set in a battle royale. It does actually, I think, have a bit of promise here. It seems to really embrace a goofiness to it, and that's really what makes it look good. That and the verticality and traversal is obviously well beyond what a pro wrestling match would be actually allow for you can climb up the sides of buildings and do some kind of parkour -y looking moves personally i think this looks like it could be a really fun game it does really depend on the execution and fortunately we don't have to wait too long to see that we're going to be running around this frankly pretty cool looking large looking map on february 8th on ps5 xbox series x and pc so early next year be on the lookout for rumbleverse and number five is a game based on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, info is actually a little scarce for this one. We've got some visuals and we've got the developers talking about it, saying that it is very authentic. The press release said they didn't just recreate locations and characters, but a whole time and place in Texas. I don't know exactly what that means because it's an asymmetrical horror multiplayer game, which I do not think is exactly what was imagined when the Texas Chainsaw Massacre film was created. So authenticity, uh, it's going to be interesting to see exactly what that means. And I'll say this, uh, I am vaguely skeptical when asymmetrical horror games are announced. However, this is a very good franchise for that. And it comes to us from the devs that did Friday the 13th, which is a pretty good example of an asymmetrical game. Gun is a good studio. This is the type of game that like the best reaction I can have is cautiously optimistic optimistic and I am having that it looks good it's one of those where we're gonna have to wait and see for more of it though the lack of info makes it difficult to make any real judgments based off what we saw it looks cool though we don't know what platforms is coming to probably safe to assume the mainstream ones PC the next gen consoles etc and we have a TBA release date at number four is The Expanse, a Telltale series, which is based on the sci-fi TV show called The Expanse. I am just going to straight up say I'm not super familiar with The Expanse. I have seen that people are really excited for the character they chose to be the protagonist in this game, Drummer. I think that the trailer really does a good job capturing the sort of traditional Telltale feel, perhaps even a little bit more so than the Star Trek trailer from Dramatic labs this is just immediately noticeable as a telltale game although the graphics have received what looks like a pretty significant upgrade i'm excited i, I don't even really know the franchise personally but i think it it's got a lot of personality like i think the trailer really put forward exactly what you kind of want out of a telltale game and that's enough for me to at least give it a spin the expanse a telltale series is coming to pc and consoles at some point in the future we don't have a release date and number three is a Wonder Woman game that is coming to us from the shadow of Mordor developers. And aside from knowing it's definitely a Wonder Woman game, we know almost nothing. Now, the fact that it's being developed by the shadow of Mordor developer definitely makes some implications. Uh, their studio head said they believe in the power of player-driven storytelling to unite people. I, I think the unite people part is the less important part. The uh, player-driven storytelling really puts us in the territory of Shadow of Mordor as well, and Wonder Woman is a very strange IP to do something like that with, but also it kind of makes sense because there's not really an established type of Wonder Woman game. So we'll keep our eyes open on this one. We don't really know a lot about it yet, obviously. Again, safe to assume PC consoles, uh, but we don't have a release date. 
At number two is Alan Wake 2, which is probably going to be the culmination of a lot of very interesting stuff. I don't know if you paid attention to Remedy or the fact that they've been basically operating in a connected universe since Alan Wake, but all of their games, Alan Wake, Quantum Break, Control, are all deeply connected. And Alan Wake 2, they're describing as their first survival horror game, implying that everything has maybe taken a turn for the worst. The trailer certainly gives us some very interesting locales, and we switch between them over the course of a long panning shot. There's not really enough to glean anything, but it says that this is a story that will eat you alive. Remedy has said they're actually going to go quiet for a while in terms of, like, press contact until they have more to show. Uh, in the meantime, we are going to be waiting a while for Alan Wake 2. It's going to be coming to PS5, the Xbox Series, and PC in 2023. At number one is Star Wars Eclipse, a new game from Quantic Dream. Now, Star Wars and Quantic Dream is an interesting pairing, and not exactly what I would have expected. They're obviously not an action game developer. They're more building narratives and creating branching interactive stories. But at the same time, that kind of makes sense for what it looks like they're trying to do with Eclipse, which is tell us about the High Republic era of Star Wars, a couple of hundred years before the events of the prequel trilogy. We do not know a lot about this game yet, other than that they gave us an incredibly cinematic trailer that is arguably more artistic than any of the recent Star Wars trailers. I don't know, given that Quantic Dream has given us some pretty interesting stuff through the years, uh, even when they fail, it's compelling. I would say this is at least something to keep your eyes on. We do not know anything official about release. It's definite to assume consoles PC though don't know when it's coming out though so we'll let you know when we know more couple of bonus games for you the first is called thirsty suitors and is a turn-based battling game that also includes skateboarding and meal cooking like it, it's about as over the top as you might imagine something that includes all those things it looks like something different don't have release information but keep an eye on it because it's definitely original looking the next one is have a nice death a procedurally generated roguelite where you play as death it looks interesting to me it has great hand-drawn graphics that's coming sometime in 2022 continuing on with dune spice wars a 4x rts set in the dune universe uh what we've seen of this game is beyond minimal so keep that in mind that is coming sometime next year though and finally the last one is an among us vr remake which is among us set in first person on the skeld presumably with the same map in VR. That is coming to the Quest 2 and PlayStation VR in 2022. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, is subscriptions. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.